in this video I'm going to be talking about the sine and cosine rules. So let's try and start this off somewhere you are familiar with. So at GCSE you'll have looked at the Pythagoras theorem and how you can use it to calculate the unknown side of a triangle and you'll come across the formula a squared plus b squared equals c squared as long as c is the longest side of the right angle triangle. Now this is all very well and good but the majority of triangles are not right-angled, so this becomes pretty pointless up to a certain point. I mean, we can form right-angled triangles out of other triangles, which can be quite useful. But what we need is another way to deal with triangles which are not so nice, and that's where the sine and the cosine rules come in. Now, so we've got a triangle here. It's not right-angled. I know it looks a bit like it if we look up here. It looks kind of like it's 90 degrees. But let's just say it's not. So we've just got this random triangle. We've got three sides, A, B, and C, and three angles, capitals, A, B, and C. We have two options here if we want to calculate unknown sides. We can resolve them into perpendicular components, so find out the component of C in this direction, the component of A in this direction, add them together, that should give you B. And I look at how you do that in another video, which you should check out. But the other way you can do it is use cosine and sine rules, and they tend to get you to a solution quicker, which is why I'm taking the time to explain them. So let's look at that. Now what the cosine rule says is that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cos a. And there's a couple of key things you need to know. This angle capital A must be opposite this side A. And likewise, the capital C is opposite C, capital B is opposite B, and it must be configured that way, otherwise it won't work. And so this is the most simple form of this. I could have rearranged the A, Bs, and Cs. It would make absolutely no difference. Now, if you're interested in where this is derived from, I'm going to look at that at the end of the video. I'll show you where this formula comes from. But this is the key thing you need to know. This is the formula you're going to need to use. Likewise, the sine rule says sine A over A is equal to sine B over B equals sine C over C. Again, if you're interested, I'll show you at the end of the video where this rule comes from. But this is essential, and again, remembering your A's must be opposite each other, C's opposite, and C's and B's opposite again, otherwise this won't work. So let's have a look at these being put into use with a question. Okay, so we've got a triangle here. And just to be annoying, they've been labelled differently, so they haven't been labelled A, B, C, and all that nicely. And what you want to do is calculate C. So first of all, let's do some labelling so you know what I'm talking about. Now, from now on, I'm going to refer to this side as A. I'm going to refer to this side as B. And I'm going to refer to this side as C. I'm sure you can see that this is going to be useful for the look at the formula. So that makes this angle in here C, this angle in here B, or if that's 40 degrees, and therefore this must be A. Okay, so the first thing, if we want to calculate a length of a side, we're going to need to use the cosine rule at some point, possibly. I mean, we could use the sine rule, but we need another angle in there. But let's use the both of them. So I'm going to show you a way of doing this. It uses both the sine and the cosine rule, so you can see them at work. It's not necessarily the fastest way to the solution, but it's a good demonstration. So first of all, we know that sine C over C is equal to sine B over B. That's just the sine rule. So if we have a look in this question, we know what C is, which we know this, we know what B is, and we know what capital B is, and we know what little b is. So we've got all the ingredients we need. So we know that sine C is equal to C sine B over B. So that's going to be 7 times by sine 40. And that's all going to be over 12. And that will lead to, once you've taken the inverse sine of that, to this calculation, and you get the angle C is 
two, one, eight, one, la, 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 degrees. Okay, so we've got this angle, but what we really want is the angle between the two sides B and C. So we want A. So how can we do that? Well, there's a nice simple rule, is that all angles of a triangle must add up to 180. So therefore, to get A, we just simply need to do 180, subtract the 40, and subtract this angle we've just calculated, la la la, and we end up with A being 117, 0.9782 la 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 degrees. Okay, you can see it's not an angle, right angle triangle. So we now have the parts we need for the cosine rule. So let's just create a bit more space. Okay, so we know for the cosine rule we're going to be applying this formula. Uh, we know B, we labelled earlier, is 12. We know C, which is 7. And we know minus 2 times 12 times 7 times by the cosine of 1, 7. Yeah, 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 yeah. And we do all that and then square root it. So if we want to do, find out what A is, we would need the square root of all of that. And this comes out at 15.24491. And now we look at the lengths in the question, they were all given to the nearest centimetre, so we'll follow that convention and stick with 15 centimetres. Okay, so that's using both the sine and the cosine rule. Some of you eagle-eyed viewers might have spotted there's a faster way of getting to the solution, but I'll leave you to try that for yourself. What I'm going to show you first is a worked solution like this. So I've had some feedback that sometimes my handwriting is a bit illegible. So here's the typed out solution to that question in case you couldn't read anything um, in the previous solution and it's like the different steps are explained. So feel free to pause and have a look at that if you wish. I said earlier I was going to show you some derivations, so how the sine and the cosine rule are actually derived. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, so first of all, let's have a go at the cosine rule. So what we're going to need to do is draw a line here. It splits up B but divides it into two right-angled triangles. Okay, so what we're essentially aiming to do here is I want to find out what A is. Now because we've got a right angle triangle, we can express it in terms of two other lengths. So I'm going to call this one here D and this one here E. So we know from Pythagoras, A squared is D squared plus E squared. And what we need is to try and put D and E in terms of C and B, and we're going to have a cosine of A in there as well. So first of all, what's D? Well, we can calculate it using resolving, which you might need to look at if you don't understand this, but anyway, what we can see is because it's a right angle triangle, D is equal to C sine A. Because essentially what we're doing is the cosine of this angle, which is the same as doing the sine of this angle. We can also see that E is B minus, and this is the other part, so we need to find this side here, which is going to be C cos. So what we've got now is that a squared is equal to c squared sine squared a, because that's your d, plus b minus c cos a, all squared. So what we're going to need to do is expand this out. And 
so we've got a squared, still got our c squared sine a squared, and we're going to end up with b squared minus 2bc cos a, and we're going to end up with a plus c squared cos squared a at the end. Uh, you might need to work through that step yourself to convince you that that's the case, but that is what we're going to get. And we'll notice we've got two terms with c squared, so I'm going to Now an identity you probably won't have come across yet is that sine squared of an angle plus cos squared of that angle is equal to 1. That's just an identity that you'll probably come across later in the course. So what we're going to end up with is this very nice arrangement that we've seen earlier, which is the cosine rule. So the steps we've done there, we've just done some resolving perpendicular components, which you can look at in another video if you want to understand what I'm doing there. And we've used this identity here and just some brackets multiplying. And we've ended up with the cosine rule. So how do we get to the cosine, uh, sorry, the sine rule? Well, it's a very similar process. Again, we start off with dividing it into our right angle triangles. Now in the right angle triangle we know that the sine of A is equal to the opposite, which would be this D, divided by the hypotenuse, which is C. Okay, so let's have a look at this. So by using resolving we can express D as a sine c because it's also because it's also a cosine of this angle in here. But so we've got a sine c. So let's put that in. Sine a a sine c over c, and you can quit very quickly see. that we get our sine rule here. Now because it doesn't matter which side we label a, b and c, we could have equally ended up proving sine b over b as this. So that's why we end up with the other expression sine b over b as well, because it doesn't matter which side we make a and b and c, they're all interchangeable. So that's the sine rule. Now these two derivations I've shown at the end, there's no need for you to know them, it's just if you're interested to know where they've come from, if there's a formula, you should always be asking, well, where's this formula come from? So you can understand more about it. So that's that.